hello everyone assalamu alaikum welcome back for another video in the series so in this video let me briefly go over the basic concepts of uh, automatic differentiation in pytorch so here i just want to show you the computation graph that we talked about in the previous video in the context of uh, of course pytorch so here in this notebook i am importing now the autograd api which is the automatic differentiation api Autograd, uh, well, you can think of it as uh, automatic gradient. Later on, we uh, when we train deeper uh, neural networks, we don't have to use Autograd explicitly. So there are functions that in PyTorch um, that we define like layers, convolutional layers, and backward function that will be used uh, by Autograd under the hood. But I think it's useful to understand how Autograd works because uh, you may also want to use this in some other contexts and uh, here's this computation graph that we talked about in the previous video uh, it's the same thing if you haven't watched the video i'll add the link in the description box now i'm defining this computation graph in pytorch So I have my input vector or tensor x, a weight w, bias b, and the activation. That's the ReLU function. So I could have also used these intermediate variables, but I think it would be a little bit overkill. We don't really need to do that. Then uh, now there's an at attribute a here or a value uh, that I said requires uh, grad equals to true. Uh, why am I doing that? That means I am interested in computing the gradient or derivative. If I don't do that, by default, it will be equal to false if I don't do anything. So it's actually a good decision by PyTorch because not always we use uh, PyTorch. Uh, when we use PyTorch, we are interested in computing gradients. And now when I run this code here, we can't actually see it here but uh, under the hood it will actually create a computation graph similar to this one and save it internally and of course this takes up memory in the computer so if we don't need a computation graph it doesn't create it but we can say we want it because uh, when we want to compute gradients we need that because uh, we need to know how we can go backward so in this case we set a requires gradient equals to true this means we will later on compute the gradient. So we ask the computer to please construct this computation graph. So you can just say I see that result is indeed the one that we have here in the figure. As you can see. Now, um, we are going to compute the gradient. So using this grad function here, if I go up again, let me go up. This is something I imported here from the autograd API. So I'm importing this um, grad function and now i'm computing the gradient of a with respect to w i'm also saying retain the graph the computation graph i say do it like uh, set it to true so it will retain it so this computes the gradient of all the partial derivative of a with respect to w the reason why it's gradient and uh, not partial derivative is it's usually working of course uh, with the vectors and matrices and this is a very simple example. In this case, we only have scalars, but this is a general function that works also with uh, vectors and matrices. So the partial derivative here is three. And that's uh, what we also got uh, in the graph above, if you recall. So everything makes sense and looks good. So now I'm doing this again for the bias unit here. So I get my derivative of one. Also to double check, this is also what we have here. So everything makes sense. Um, notice now I didn't set or retain graph to true. I didn't do that by intention. And if it's not set, then it will actually destroy the computation graph after calling grad. So why is that? Um, in the context of deep neural network, we don't need the graph again until the next forward pass path. 
So, and since it's a dynamic uh, framework, the forward pass uh, might change. So actually the graph is constructed every time from scratch, but this is not a detail we uh, need to be considered right now. Uh, what I mentioned or what I wanted to show you here is if I now execute this again, it won't work because we have destroyed the computational graph. It says or it basically tells us why this error occurs is uh, this because uh, we haven't retained the graph so we can't do it twice why is that um, it's usually uh, yet uh, to save also the memory because imagine you wouldn't do that and um, you have a deep neural network and you call the forward method multiple times then in each epoch or in each iteration the graph would be bigger and bigger and it will grow so in this case it's getting destroyed after each update or after each uh, grading computation and then rebuild from scratch to prevent having it growing infinitely large so but this was just a basic concept of how this works i will show you in a later video how this is done automatically by a pytorch using backward function so this was briefly how the automatic differentiation works in PyTorch using this grad function and uh, really what it is doing it's going on constructing a computation graph under the hood and then it's going to compute the derivatives for us. So that's it for this video. I hope you understood how this computation graph is constructed using this automatic grad function of PyTorch. If you have any questions uh, drop a comment below. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.